welcome everyone to satsang. Rest in your own nature as being consciousness. Know yourself as peace, as that which is aware before all objects all sensations, all thoughts, all emotions. <coughs> thoughts, emotions, sensations, experiences, coming and going. This is their nature. That which is aware of what is coming, staying perhaps for a while, and then going. This is your true nature as being consciousness. Whatever comes spontaneously in thought in sensation and in experience naturally has as its nature dissolution at its conclusion. So it is with this body. All things rising in mind, emotion and experience having been born in some way, dissolution, impermanence is their nature. What is your nature? Unborn, naked awareness. This awareness is eternally here. You can't even say, this is my awareness. Or, everyone here and everyone everywhere can say, this is my awareness. This is what unites us all, this recognition, I, I, I. This is the foundation of oneness, the source of all that is. This is why Sri Ramana Maharshi encouraged us to just keep asking. Who is this I? This I, which is aware. He didn't suggest to us that we ask, what is the nature of this experience in body, mind, and world? This, he said, is a distraction, a looking away from our true nature as being consciousness. In fact, he recommended the opposite. He said, as thoughts arise, emotions arise, experiences arise, simply swat them away. Not this, not this. I am not this. If we do this repeatedly, then naturally arises the question, then who is this I? What is its nature?
by doing this inquiry, we slowly become, it becomes possible for us to understand that our nature is happiness, being, presence, eternal here, eternal now, as being, consciousness and bliss. This is your nature. Having realized this, having heard this good news, rest. Abide as the self. That which is here before all else and is aware of everything that comes and goes. You are that. <clears throat> the condition of your body, of your mind, of your emotions, of your experiences, is meaningless. Do you want to hear that or not? Does that terrify you? <laughs> Uh, yes, I see. All the heads shaking, no. Yes. Coming to this recognition, it is possible then for you to abide as the self, that which is before all of this meaningless coming and going, and to find meaning, if you need it, in pure being, naked awareness, the presence of this here now to know that you are free, unborn, naked awareness. Now you can dance, should something come, stay for a while and go. Live without care, not live without caring, live without a care. <coughs> Understanding that whatever is needed will come. Whatever is not needed will not come. Finish your effort now. Let that which is guiding your life and has brought you here. Have you. Surrender. Give yourself, your personality, your life, to the self, to the Supreme. And enjoy the dance. Enjoy the peaceful nature of this awareness. The bird song, the breeze, the presence of the body on the cushion or the chair. The life of the sage is enjoyment, not through seeking pleasure. but through being, presence, awareness, 
love of all that is here, of all that is coming and going. Enjoy. Be happy. I'm very much enjoying your silence this morning, this peace and calm. this stillness which is here now. Do you know that you are still peaceful and calm, even with a busy mind? So if I point out this stillness and you go, no, not me, I have a busy mind, I'm crazy this morning. <laughs> know that it's not you. What I am pointing toward, what I am feeling, is your presence, not your mind. It's on. Hi. Hello. I only want to say you thank you. Thank you for your presence, for your love, and for this moment. My English not, not this very well. Your heart doesn't need a language of English or any other. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you very much. I see it in your eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Would you be willing to speak on the beauty and grace of Arunachala? Uh, maybe you should speak on the beauty and the grace of Arunachala. <laughs> mm, I heard you're very good at this, though. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're really trying to put me on the spot, eh? <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. When I first came here, this was about 2007 or so, I didn't know anything about Arunachala. Yeah. For some time I had been practicing in the United States and had transitioned from nearly 20 years in Buddhist practice into an appreciation and a recognition of the Advaita way. And I had been exploring Sri Ramana's teaching for a couple of years. And I was living in an ashram in New Mexico. <clears throat> ashram of Neem Kroli Baba. I live a one kilometer from there. Mm, very good. For the last 11 years. Yeah, very good. Sorry. Yeah. And it was at the end of Hanuman Jayanti, that uh, a woman approached me and said, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking with you. I'm leaving in the next day or so. But I feel that we should talk. And I said, okay. We went out on the veranda. We sat and together for a few minutes. And she said, tell me something about your story. So I told her what I just told you. And that I was now pursuing uh, a more Vedanta path 
through the teachings of Sri Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi. And she said, oh, okay, now I know what this is about. <laughs> Some of you have heard this story. And she said, I live three blocks from Ramana Maharshi's ashram in Tiruvannamalai. So if you will come, I'll make arrangements for you at the ashram and you can come whenever you are ready. I'm going back next week. She had been living here for some years. And in that moment, I heard the call from Sri Bhagavan and from Arunachala, though I didn't know about Arunachala. Arriving here two months later for a few weeks' stay, within one day or two, I realized that somehow this place, with its noise and its dirt and its traffic and its smoky sky, was what I had been searching for for 55 years at that time. And I knew immediately that this was Bhagavan's grace and the grace of Sri Arunachala. And slowly I began to learn something about Arunachala, but mostly I just kept climbing the hill, wandering around. In those days, the forest was not open, wasn't blocked. And you could go, there were many sadhus living on the hill, and you could go on the hill, just as Sri Bhagavan had. And you could walk in the freedom of Arunachala's grace. And so I did that over and over and over. Sometimes sitting for a half a day or a whole day high up on our naturalist flanks, poking my way through the forest. <laughs> Climbing Parvati Hill and gazing at Bhagwan Arunachala for hours at a time. And this was the place coming out of a Buddhist tradition which was Mm. in some ways very dry. This was the place and the time that I came into contact with the grace of surrender at the feet of Arunachana. It was through this daily practice of either climbing the hill or going and sitting out on the Girivalam with the sadhus living in the peaceful embrace and the silence of Arunachala. And even though now, almost 20 years later, Arunachala is somehow caged mm. and uh, the city is surrounding the mountain as Bhagavan said it would one day. Mm. And the traffic has become over the top. <laughs> Somehow the grace of Arunachala is still here and its presence, this recognition of surrender in Bhagwan, is still possible. But you really have to listen now. If you want to hear his voice. Sri Arunachala speaks to those who are true devotees, not devotees necessarily of Arunachala, though that does happen, but devotees of truth, those who look at the hill and see his holy embrace, one hand here, the other over there. and know that they are held in the peacefulness 
and can surrender into the recognition of Lord Shiva resting as the holy hill in silence. Let him embrace you. If you know the true meaning of silence, and you do if you're sitting here, even if you think you don't, if you know the true meaning of silence, then you know Sri Aranachana, who allows all of us, all beings, all animals, to wander around his feet to climb his flanks, to, cl to climb up to Skanda Ashram and beyond for some of you. <laughs> but I don't recommend that. <laughs> but I know you do it anyway. <laughs> what to do? I know this calling and this urge. To know Aranatala's nature is to directly come into contact with your nature as silence. Sitting quietly, radiating peace and love while all of this chaos goes on at your feet. Aranatala lives here as this holy hill. But for you, because you have come, more importantly, lives in your heart. Aranachala is your nature, as being consciousness and bliss. Live in that silence and that peace, allowing the chaos that is human life to dance around you. So you are staying near in Taos, near Neem Kroli Baba Ashram? Yeah, the last 11 years. Hmm. And I go there every day, have chai. And uh, hmm. yeah, very lucky, yes. very blessed. Very, very, very good. Yeah. Please take my regards. That's all Hanuman Das, you are here. Very good. Thanks. I really enjoy this topic and I want to proceed a little bit. Uh, a few years ago I was really cold, but it was really a huge drive to explore the inner path. And uh, with one of a friend we um, discovered some websites, uh, how to go, how to follow science. And we tried to get into the fences uh, and uh, succeeded a little bit, but it was so much thorny bushes that it was impossible to go uh, yes. a lot. So I would just like you to speak more about this going uh, in our Girivalam around Arunachala and how it felt like, because for me, even a little bit going inside, uh, like uh, until the forest department after the Skandarsham, uh, it, it, it feels like very, very different, like uh, that you can connect with Arunachala much more. So again, 
I want to say, I, I, I am not recommending <laughs> to anyone It is a unique experience, in my experience, um, to be in nature in general, you know. But to be on Arunachala, to be on the in, in the inner path years ago, and you're right, it's not open anymore. The path is not there anymore. It, had, it this is jungle, this is forest, so it has it had to be maintained. And once it's closed, the forest has reclaimed it, so it's not there anymore. Those of you who are thinking, well, maybe I can go and find that. It's not there. Little sec sections of it may still be there, but in general, it's gone. Actually, my experience is that it's possible to go until the forest department. It's kind of like going to the mouth of the lion directly, mm -hmm. but uh, there you can a little bit go uh, inside the hill itself if you just pass. And, yes. Uh, so yes. there, uh, as they are walking uh, this path themselves, uh, it's possible to go. But we try to go uh, near the Mauna Swami place, and uh, that is po impossible to uh, to make maybe 300 meters or something like that because it's overgrown totally. Yes. Yes. And you know, this is not a bad thing. This is, it, if you have the opportunity to spend time even on the Yuri Valum looking through the fence, you can see that um, many of the animals which were scarce and were very, very hard to see uh, years ago because of the number of people who were on the hill itself, they are just so happy now. There, there are so many deer and so many wild pigs and so many monkeys and everything, birds and everything is there. This is now their natural wild space. So I am happy for that. This piece which our Anachala is, and what you experience there, find within your own heart this peace that exists as Aranachala is within you. The reason you recognize it is not because it's new to you or it's being added on to you. It's there because you know it intuitionally. Even if you don't know it, if you have one of those busy minds, still busy minds, Somehow you know it. This is the reason you recognize it. So the question for you now is, will you find it? Whether you are sitting on the, on the, in the forest, illegally, I might add now, <laughs> along our Nachala's base, or whether you are sitting in Paris, or New York City, or Istanbul, will you find a piece of our Nachala there? This is your challenge. This is your task. So, Arunachala is a guidepost, right? Lord Shiva sitting in stillness, peace and calm, eternal silence is your nature. This is your being. So, having now seen it, whether it's in, on Arunachala, or it's in Ramana Ashram, or Yogi Ram Sarakumar Ashram, or Neem Kroli Baba Ashram. Wherever you see this peace, wherever you feel the depth of this being, know this to be that one self. Know this as a moment of pure abiding as the self. And know that your task now is not to seek peace, it is to be peace. To keep coming back, finding that kernel of peacefulness within your own being and opening your heart to Sri Aranachala, wherever you are. This is not so difficult, but uh, I had before another question. 
okay. which I did not give. It's uh, how to know I am the self if I am not feeling this. If my body ah, is uh, on the contrary, like uh, like vibrating with all the monsters. First, you have to recognize that to um, be the self is not a feeling. If you think that you are to be the self is a feeling, an experience, right? In the mind, in the body, mm. you will go on seeking the self. You will have some pleasant experiences. But because they are manufactured out of your idea of the feeling of what the self is, they will always dissolve. And so then you have to come back to the teaching which says that which comes, stays for a period of time and goes, is not it. It is not it. So what that says to us is that this recognition of being consciousness is not a feeling, it's not a thought, it's not an emotion, it's not an experience, then the natural question has to arise, what is it? And if you want to know what this what is, you definitely can speak to the own, your own intuition, to the, your own deep knowing as the self, and you can say, show me the self. When you say, show me the self, you have to suspend all your ideas about what that might be. If you say, show me the self, and then you want the self to bring you certain experiences, the revelation of the mother, you want to have this explosive realization of being, right, as, a, as an experience. You want to have something inside you which comes as a feeling and then lasts forever. If, you, if, this, if, this, if these ideas will, are still there for you, then what the self is in its true and natural condition will elude you because the mind will always create what you are asking for. Actually, from time to time, I, I have this uh, thought that I, you know, the best is to, become, uh, to come back to new, neutral, neutrality. Like, uh, to which is not uh, a feeling. For me, mm. the word neutral is like uh, something like a pointer. But it seems that uh, I do that for some time, but then I forget and I again, I'm running after the experience of peace, of uh, experience yeah. of bliss. Yeah, but this is just vasanas, so what? So, the way to deal with this is to realize, ah, I forgot again. So this is the nature of the vasana. This is the nature of the veiling quality of, of the mind. Don't be disturbed. Just once again, show me the real. I'm not interested in all of these experiences. Show me the real. Okay? Just show me the real. Be persistent with this. And I don't necessarily mean persistent in the sense that you are asking it like a mantra every moment of every day, though you certainly can. Show me the real. But, keep coming. Each time you realize that you have drifted back into your old habits, to your old ways of forgetfulness, leave yourself alone. Come in peace into the question, show me the real. So always just leaving whatever it is you think has happened. Always entering into peacefulness, calmness, with this question. Show me the real. What is real? And then, you are here, not uh, as a blank, uh, mm, not as a blank nothingness, but as an alert, aware, fullness, waiting, if you will, for the grace of being to show you the real. Just keep coming back. You see, the self is your nature. Beyond what you think, what you feel, what you experience. 
This is the foundation of this practice of neti neti, not this, not this. This very simple practice that Bhagavan recommended. Not this, not this. This very simple practice makes it possible for us to remind ourselves re frequently throughout the day that whatever experience we're having, whatever thoughts we're having, whatever forgetfulness we're experiencing, all of this is not this I. Not this, not this, not this. Until the question, who is this I that I feel so strongly as I am, as presence, who is this I? When this question comes, it comes naturally, but it comes in the space of peace and it comes in the space of openness, not with an uh, expectation for an answer or a certain feeling or a certain type of experience to come. And then it becomes possible for the grace of Arunachala, for the grace of Sri Ramana, to open the heart of being so that you can come to the recognition of what is already here, not what your mind is anticipating as an experience. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question that is kind of complex. I, I struggle to put it into words, but kind of the how to gap, uh, bridge the gap between the ultimate and the relative. Like I can understand ultimately these higher realizations, not understand, understand fully, of course. But um, when I'm in the world, I feel like I'm also my body and I feel like it's all part of it. And I feel that sometimes um, also the duality between holy or unholy or uh, certain things that are expected on the path and if it's all this consciousness and oneness then isn't everything a part of it um, and also how to bridge bridge it into um, suffering and like I come from Israel and what is happening there right now is terrible so sometimes I feel how do I bring this I cannot come to people who are suffering and be like oh you're not your body you're not your feelings when there's so much pain and, yes. and yes. things that are happening so I, I really struggle to understand how to put this higher things into the ground into the earth mm -hmm. yeah. yeah very good thank you so the first thing to understand is that life has its own plan and life is going on the way that it is going on whether we understand it or not. Mm -hmm. The next thing to understand is that we're not talking about the ultimate and the relative mm -hmm. as being distinct and separate. They are the same thing along a continuum. On one side is ignorance, on the other side of this continuum is liberated freedom. This is a continuum, they are not opposites. Though the teaching talks about duality, there is a continuum from one side to the other. The pendulum does not move from here to here without some distance in between, right? So there is this so everything that you are looking at is somewhere on that continuum. What you're talking about in terms of Israel, in terms of what's going on there, what's going on all over the world. Is going on on the side of ignorance. What is ignorance? Ignorance is veiled consciousness. Consciousness which is not seen in its clear light but is rather seen through the, mm, through the experience of identification with the body-mind. 
So we have a lot of people thinking that they are the body-mind and that they have somehow to do something to protect and defend this body-mind. And it's not that there isn't a reason to do that, but the reason to protect and defend the body-mind, for instance, to take care of it, to exercise it, to feed it well, to take care of one's neighbors, to look at one's children and feel that love and compassion, is not out of a sense of identification that this is mine and I must defend and protect it, but rather to see that this is life itself. My experience needs to be that I am here to serve this life. What we see in the world is not the service of life, is it? What you are seeing in your home country is not the service of life. Not at this point. There was a time when it was, right? There was a time when to be in this place in the world, in this country in the world, was to preserve and protect life. For what purpose? For the purpose of realization, for the purpose of waking up, for the purpose of serving life, for the purpose of serving the Supreme, for the purpose of serving God. This was the original intent. But you see, when ignorance is allowed to hold sway for long periods of time, not just there, but all these other places in the world as well, right now, then we see the consequence of that ignorance. Is it God's plan? I can't say. But it seems so. In the traditions of India, Hinduism, Vedanta, there is this talk of cycles. Yes, you are familiar with this, right? And it's said that now the cycle which we are in is the Kali Yuga. The definition of Kali Yuga hmm, is destruction for the sake of rebirth. Hmm? Destruction is by its, in its own nature not pretty. And perhaps no one escapes it. There's a long tradition of recognition in India of the yugas taking 36,000 years, going through the cycles. Of course, in our human history, we say, how can that be? We don't have human history going back 36,000 years. We don't have civilization. We don't have enlightenment. We don't have uh, the teachings of Vedanta going back this far. Ah, well, all this proves is that it's potentially been destroyed. But the mm, guarantee of the Vedas and the guarantee of the teachings of Vedanta are that always the sages come again. But the cycle of birth, of, of adherence in life for a period of time, then destruction and resting in order that something new can be born out of that, this comes again and again. And so, I only say these things to you so that you can begin to appreciate that this cycle is going on and you may not know what its meaning is, what its purpose is. You may not know where it's going. But what you do know, what you can know, is you can ask this question, who am I in the midst of all of this? Is there a place in all of this destruction of the Kali Yuga, a place for this question, for this knowing who I am? What is the life and the purpose and the being of life itself? Not my life or my country. Mm. Continue to ask yourself, who is this? This will move you along this continuum from ignorance to awakening until this continuum and everything that it represents also dissolves and you know yourself as being consciousness. And if you know yourself as being consciousness, then whatever dance comes to you you will dance without identity.
meaning without ignorance. So be willing to learn for the sake of all beings, who am I? So that when you sit, when you enter a room, when you move through life, you move as this recognition of being, consciousness and bliss, whether the world recognizes you or not. You are that. Your movement in the world, as it will surely continue as long as you have this body, will be the movement of grace, of wisdom, of compassion, and of love. This is the meaning of your life, regardless of what the world appears to be doing. You see, the world is the way that the world is because the world is the way that the world is. Simple, it's not complicated. The world is the way that it is. But each of you, as an arising moment in consciousness, you can make a choice. Do you agree? Or do you see within the dance, as difficult as it is, do you see the self? Not hidden behind the ignorance and the egos of individuals, but shining through the ignorance of the individuals in the world. Make your practice about the recognition and realization that being consciousness, your nature, is the nature of all, whether it's realized by all or not. There is plenty of support for ignorance in this life, isn't there? Your task is to support wisdom in yourself, the recognition of yourself as the self, as being consciousness, to know Buddha nature as my nature, not someone else's. That this nature is being, consciousness, compassion, love, understanding, presence. This is the nature of awakened living. Ignorance will take care of itself in its own way. It's not your business. Make your business wisdom. And see God, see love, see compassion. Be understanding in everything. Even when your mind says you don't understand. If you know somehow that you do, and that in this moment, as you walk through life, you are walking as peace. Then the world will do as it does. But as you walk, many beings will feel the nature of your own peace. And for a moment, they will experience within themselves the natural peace of awakened being. They won't know where it came from, but they will know it. And that seed gets planted in that moment. And one day, there may be a mighty tree standing there in the heart of that being, because for a moment, there was an experience of being, of peace, of kindness, of compassion. And while you did nothing but walk by, that seed was planted. So maintain that wisdom within yourself. Hold this recognition, I, 
I, I am. Leave the rest to God, to Arunachala, to the Supreme Self. Don't be distracted by the ways of the world. You have permission to finish this game of distraction and live your life as being consciousness. Abide as that and walk in peace. Hari Om Tatsat.